What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today we're going to be doing my full review of the TACCOM Knife Vigor. It's a mouthful. Let's go ahead and get into it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some size comparisons, gonna jump into my thoughts and impressions on the knife, and we're gonna switch out to the black hardware on this one. I think it's gonna look so good. I know the silver matches the blade, but I just think an all black handle with the silver blade is still gonna give you that tux look, and it's gonna look really good. Now, let's jump into the size comparisons. This is definitely more a medium-sized knife. As you can see here, it is roughly about the same size overall as the Echo, and we'll bring out the Suncut Serene. And you can see the Serene is longer overall. Let's go ahead and bring the Echo out and we will bring or pull the bug, uh, pull the Echo off and we will bring the bug out out. And the bug out is going to be about the same size. We will take the Serene out of here and bring the Protec Mordax out. So if you're familiar with these folders, hopefully this is helping you. But don't worry, I'm going to bring an OTF out here. I don't want you guys to think that it's weird that I'm doing only folding knife comparisons to an OTF. Here it is against the Demco AD 20.5 and Spyderco Shaman. As you can see, def definitely more in the medium size territory for sure. I like the size of it, actually. I love that it's a medium size. Let's go ahead and bring out the only OTF that I have currently in my inventory because there's some out on loan, and that is going to be the Hogue Counter-Strike. Definitely one of my favorites for sure. And as you can see, the Hogue is more full-sized, whereas the Vigor is medium really like this knife though let's go ahead and jump into the weight sorry and then my thoughts and impressions apologize 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 let's see here 2.8 that is really lightweight now i did reach out to tk uh tech com sorry i reached out to TACCOM. sorry that did not cut off cut off okay i reached out to TACCOM. And they did inform me that Best Tech is the OE for this knife. Having said that, and I will throw that price up on the screen, coming in at that price for a Best Tech made knife, that's a really good deal. Also, I love the fact that the Vigor is built similarly to how the Hogue is, where it has very minimal space on the side here for the show side scale. I love that thin profile of the knife. It's really, really nice. It is a slight skosh bit thicker blade stock, but around the same height, a little bit more height actually, I think. No, it's around the same height, around the same height. And it gives a really nice flat grind to it. Now, I love the G10 inlay here. It looks really good. This switch is perfect. It is Microtech-esque styled without wanting to rip the skin off my finger. Man, it has about a medium to medium heavy detent on it. So it's very easy to actuate, but over time, the finger is going to get tired from pressing down. Now you can go in, pick up, come down, and then do it this way, and you're not going to have the finger be sore. And if you're not a maniac fidgeting with your OTF in the way that I like to do, it's going to be just fine. Now, you do have a slightly different G10 pattern here. It's ribbed for her pleasure versus over here. You have kind of like that wood grain look or carbon fiber look on here. So they do actually mix it up a little bit. And I kind of like that. It goes all the way up underneath the pocket clip, which is not reversible. I think that is a little bit of a miss. But I do like the fact that you don't have empty holes on this side. So take it how you want. Now, it doesn't mean they can't carry it left-handed. It just means that when you go to carry it left-handed, the switch is going to be next to the hand. And that's why I'm saying like it's going to, you know, you can potentially run across the switch. But it's so heavy that you would really have to intentionally deploy it. And I think that's not going to be an issue. Um, also left-handed, you could throw it in the back pocket and it's going to tuck that switch in. But honestly, in the front left pocket, 
it's going to be just fine, same as it is on the right pocket. And I think I said that backwards. The hand's going to come across the switch in the right pocket. So I just totally mixed that up. That's what happens sometimes when you don't do a lot of OTFs. They just became legal here in Virginia, so I'm getting familiar with them and spending more time with them, and I like them a lot. Um, they're a lot of fun. They're great for EDC. They have a nice profile, and this one here having that Tonto is going to be nice because you still are able to do puncture tasks. You're able to pinch grip this to get into packages, and then you do have an acute point here, so you're able to do some detail cutting and detail work, which I really like. I think it's great to have that option. Now, as far as blade play, uh, about the same as what you would experience on a Microtech. You got some up and down, side to side. My, my camera got confused. So that's pretty much what you're seeing there. I like this because it has like the side to side finish, even though it's a little hard to tell here on the top. And then you have that raw belt satin finish. You're working with 154 CM blade steel, which is a really good blade steel at this price point. Again, I think it's appropriate for an EDC OTF that you're gonna use regularly. It's gonna be well-rounded. It's gonna be like S30V performance, but at a lower rate, right? Not quite as tough, not quite as good at edge retention, not quite as corrosive resistant, but it's gonna give you that balance. That's what 154 CM brings to you at that point. I love the fuller on here, really nice styling. Again, really nice tip on here. Be careful with that because I can see that potentially chipping depending on what type of task you are doing. And the deployment on here is really nice. It's a solid eight, maybe a seven. Let me see it, hold on. Let me see this counter strike. This is like my measuring or my baseline. I'd call this like a seven to a seven and a half. This is like nine. It hits hard with good sounds but I've seen and have handled some that are slightly better. So not quite the best, but I, I like this for a carry size. All four fingers fit on here. Very comfortable to use, nice and chamfered all around. I like this one a lot. Easy recommendation for the price point. If you don't want to spend 250 to $300 for an American OTF, which is not that unreasonable, this is a very nice option for you. Now, let's go ahead while I'm talking about the knife. Um, the Counter-Strike is gonna be my only alternative recommendation and these are looking like T6. Yep, so they are T6. Um, I don't know, I'll have this linked down below. I don't know if they're back in stock yet or not, but I really like this because it uses both types of bits and it's something that I don't mind leaving in the garage. I have it locked but it does ratchet and it does have a spinning top here. So you can hold it back and you are able to do the quick spins. Now for control, I like to be close, but for this one, it's not that bad. And we're probably gonna go ahead, I have the lube here as well. Back here, it's not that bad. We're gonna go ahead and just take the, and I really should have brought the burrito roll out here so that I don't lose this stuff. But what I'll do, just to make sure, as I'll use this like a tray. Um, let's do it this way. Come on. There we go. Um, these should be steel, and this magnet should hold it in place, I believe. Oh, that's the pocket clip screw. Hold on, I don't want to get mixed up. Okay, well, let me do it this way. These are the pocket clip screws. I don't want to get them mixed up. This is the body screw. You can definitely tell the length and the way that the bolt is finished, but I really think the black bolts, I'm so glad they included those. Yeah, I think that looks way cleaner. I mean, some people are going to want the pop of the polished screw on there, and I don't blame you. You know, everybody likes their thing. Um, I think the blackout is going to look sick and I don't like a coated blade because usually you lose a little bit of HRC on a coated blade. So I like to think that when I don't do a coated blade or don't have a coated blade that I am getting for sure 
the max heat treat out of it without question. Almost done here, relatively easy. Uh, I'm not looking to do the disassembly right now. When I'm done here, we'll throw a little bit of lube on there so I can show you kind of how I like to lube my knife. We can do the upside down test to make sure the mechanism doesn't let go. And then we should be able to wrap up from there. Uh, apologies if you weren't looking to this, but hopefully you're you know interested to see what it looks like with the screws on there and all blacked out. I think the only thing that could have made it better is if the button was black. I think that would have been sweet, but I get it. You know, sometimes it saves costs to have all the buttons the same color. Um, you know, maybe they're trying to add some contrast with the button. Who knows? Could be any number of reasons that I'm just not thinking about. I'm just saying, I think it would have also been that much cooler because it's already a cool knife at this price point because you're getting it for under 200 bucks. Um, would have been a really awesome knife. At least I think so. Hopefully, Future Me has thrown that up there already. Yeah, hopefully, that wasn't too painful for you. I actually think the black screws are going to even look good on the uh, the pocket clip here. Kind of wish that it had a black pocket clip. <laughs> I want everything black on the handle. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, I like the way that looks. I think that's kind of dope. It brings out the TK a little bit more out of the... Uh, pocket clip the logo on the pocket clip so i will put all those away later we'll grab the oil here in a second and uh we'll wrap up oh i forgot to mention so everything's in there nice and tight there you go let me know what you think about that in the comment look better to you look worse i think that looks pretty fresh um i probably can send that pocket clip out to get it seracoded or i might be able to check to see if like a standard Benchmade Protec clip from like Lynch or MXG might fit on there. I think I might even have one still around here That might work so I can check it out that way. Um, give me one second I will move this stuff out of the way really quick and we'll grab the lube. All right So this is just hops gun oil that is in a pen that you can pick up. It's an applicator pen um, Really easy to find and you can see the oil likes to come out relatively quick so what I'm going to do is wipe that excess off because that is just too much. Um, what I do is just kind of run it along the edge here, letting it come out on its own. It's coming out a little fast, so I'm going a little quick. That's all I put on there. Um, I'm going to throw this in the bin over here. And then I work it in. Let it kind of get where it's going to get in there maybe five, six, seven times. And then what I do, I'm gonna grab a different cloth. Um, I just go ahead and dry the excess off. And then I'm gonna open and close it more rapidly this time. And you can see it's still coming out. So wipe off the excess, the excess. Try to get down in here really good. And I do that because I don't want too much getting on the mechanism that catches. And I do that because I don't want it to wear a mark on the blade. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is just hit the excess off of the nose or the mouth or whatever you want to call it here to try to make sure, wow, it's hard to see on the black guys, that I've gotten it all. Check the knife. A little bit on this side top looks good this side looks good so let me just wipe it over here one more time yeah it does feel like it's on the catch just a little bit yeah and it's coming back out so it might have gone in on that side too much let me flip it over and do it went to look at the blade and i closed it dummy gosh all right so i think we're good upside down no issues whatsoever blade looks relatively dry there's like a drop there a little bit there on the blade so just keep working it like that it could be that there's still some on the inside here looking at it off camera so I can see it a little bit yeah feels good 
So I'll let that sit and uh, that'll be it. That'll be everything for the Techcom Vigor or Vigor 2, I think is what they call it. Let me know what you thought about this one down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. I know I don't do a ton of OTFs and I know that there's folks out there that can have them and I know that there's folks out there that can't and hopefully those laws will change and you'll be able to come back to these videos to see and hear about these ones that I've done on the channel. But I think this is a great build at a great price point, especially if you want to get into OTFs and you don't want to spend a ton of money, but you don't want to end up with one that is not built well. Thanks to everyone out there that leaves the likes, the comments, and is subscribed. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. And until next time, peace.